Hill is a well-known London tourist destination. So with my sister being in town last week, I started thinking, is there a way for us to do Notting Hill without the crowds of rom-com enthusiasts? Yes, there is. Cue a rainy, overcast Monday evening just before the dinner rush. Before heading out, Nicole made sure to do her research. After quickly determining on her own, I might add, which I was very proud of, that Notting Hill really is nowhere near the Ritz Hotel, we set off to experience it for ourselves. So the plan is we're gonna check out some cool streets with some cool houses. Yep. We got some churches on the list. We got a bookstore, an antique shop, a pub. M maybe I'm more than one. Pub. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely two. <laughs> maybe three. Oh dear. Oh god. Yeah. You know, crossing the street here. Okay, go. It's very easy to come to Notting Hill just to get wrapped up in its pop culture history. And sure, it's fun to find your way to the street where the famous Love Actually card scene was filmed. Or the second generation bookshop that inspired Hugh Grant's character in the 1990s film Notting Hill. But there's a rich and at times problematic history that surrounds this part of West London that I bet a lot of foreigners are completely oblivious to. Not this foreigner as of now. So here's what I learned. In the 1800s, Notting Hill began to transform from open countryside to a bustling town with its roots in brick making, pottery, and pig farming. Over time, Notting Hill became a sought after and relatively affordable alternative to the overpriced and overpopulated neighborhoods in London Central. Unsurprisingly, developers, most notably James Ladbrook, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, as per usual, experienced some challenges along the way. Let's put it this way, pig farm water runoff and clay ground do not exactly create the most ideal conditions for construction or sanitization. Following the bombings of World War II, housing shortages and mass immigration from the Caribbean to the area, accompanied by 1950s racism, social tension and riots, many of the grand houses that we see today were converted into multiple occupancy dwellings. This led to a 30-ish year period that many historians describe as poverty-stricken and lawless. But from this period of difficulty emerged the underground 1960s music scene, the world famous Notting Hill Carnival Festival, and the evolution of the Portobello Road Market, famous for selling antiques, vintage clothing, and authentic foods. I'll be honest, mistakes were made on our visit. <laughs> there really isn't much happening there on a Monday. I would recommend braving the crowds on a Friday or Saturday to get the full authentic experience. I've included a link in the description below so that you can plan your trip to Portobello Road Market much more effectively than we did. However, we did find this nice knob store to spend some time in. Knobs? Nice knobs. There's something special about visiting this part of London on a soggy spring day. Regardless of how gloomy the skies are, when you turn a corner and you see this, you can't help but feel a little bit more cheery. Here's a lesser known fact about seeking out these clumps of cheery homes for yourself. There's really no logical way to go about it. Church number one, just up this hill. I've been doing a lot of walking lately. Not the most comfortable <laughs> uphill walk of my life. True or false? Cars here can park on either side of the road. True. Yeah. That's true. Definitely true. Does that look bizarre to you? Yes. So that looks strange. It's really confusing. <laughs> After a quick visit inside St. John's Church and testing Nicole's knowledge of UK traffic laws, we came across this perplexing site. It's stolen? Did it go through the front gate? Did they build the house around it? Do people steal telephone booths here? The mystery of the front garden telephone booth remains to be solved. However, a few minutes later, I had decided that I had cracked the source of the Notting Hill name. 
which is likely far from the truth. Where do names come from? Notting Hill. It's a hill. Definitely hilly. Yeah, it's a hill. So I guess it makes sense. I did Google it when we got home and I was left with a number of confusing explanations. So if you know the real story behind the source of the Notting Hill name, feel free to share it with us in the comments. Look at wow. this. Oh my gosh. Fork in the road. <laughs> Elgin Crescent. It's the one. This way. So Nicole's decided she likes the yellow ones. You like the yellow yeah. ones? Yeah. Happiest color. And I'm a I'm a periwinkle fan myself because just gotta be weird, you know? Like this is it for me. Yeah, no, you know what? I can't deny that. Crayon box houses aren't your thing. There may be something else about Notting Hill that will capture your attention. The collection of cars here is next level. The mint green car that people talk about and photograph was under a protective cover when Nicole and I were visiting. But here she is when Eric and I visited Notting Hill last year. In fact, while I was swooning over pastel facades, Eric was repeatedly collecting his jaw up from off the pavement in front of various luxury and vintage cars. Nicole and I did, however, stumble upon this cutie and then got back to navigating our way to the first pub of the evening. Straight up that street, I think. Oh, we're gonna go this way where the bus is going and the Elgin pub is down there. So we can go check that out and see what we think. Pub time! We chose the Elgin pub because it's old. It's recommended by locals and it dates back to the 1850s. It's known for being a mod culture hotspot in the 1950s and was part of the underground punk scene in the 1970s. This is also where Nicole experienced her first cask ale. The bartender was considerate of this and offered to microwave her pint should it not be warm enough. It's room temperature, yeah. <laughs> what do you think? I like it. Do you? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Another perplexing thought. Is it Elgin or is it Elgin? It's totally up to you. I don't remember what I said there, but it must have been a knee slapper. The first quarter was good and I enjoyed it. And then now that I'm at the bottom, it's like <laughs> as warm as if I spent an hour trying to drink this beer and I forgot about it. And then I found it at a bar on the counter and I came back to it and decided to finish it. That's how it tastes at the bottom. One and done. Yeah. While sitting there, it wasn't hard to imagine the dancing, life chats, and bar fights that have taken place over the years in this historic pub. With the first pint of the evening polished off, we made our way back through Notting Hill. Doesn't look like much when you first get on the street. In search of some of the brightest homes in London. Then you see that the head, you're yeah. like, I know where I'm supposed great. to be. I'm buzzing, let's drink up. You does look like big fun. Come on, let's get it on. Like that one, Finn Gayson. I'm so I think I have to go with that purple one. Yeah. I think that one's yeah. my favorite. I think so. Is young, so are we? The night is young, so are we, baby? The night is young, so it's 
there's a little street right over there that says St. Luke's Muse. That's where we're going. Looks cute. Ooh, nice music. Lovely. This is where they filmed. This is where we filmed the intro. <laughs> it's a bit of a problem. This is the second time this week that that's happened. <laughs> you <do> this is also. <laughs> this is also where that scene in Love Actually, when he's like professing his love on the cards at Christmas. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. because it's Christmas, he decides to tell her. This is where it was filmed. You tell the truth at Christmas. That's right. You should tell the truth all the time, yeah. but you know, it's true. We came across a Notting Hill bookshop imposter and made sure to express our feelings about that. It's fake. It's a big lie. I'm, I'm fairly certain that's that not it. Her. No. No. That is for tourist purposes only. That's oh, not yeah. the bookshop. After walking around a little bit more, I don't want to say we're lost. We're not found. But I also don't know where I'm going, you know? And arriving at our dinner spot a little too early, we wandered into the Windsor Castle pub. You know, it was like just calling to us, like begging us to come in for another pint. You know? You know the feeling? I couldn't get over these tiny doorways and the chrome signs that politely asked you to mind your head. I also couldn't get over the fact that we only gave ourselves 10 minutes to enjoy a pint. She's like, oh yeah, we have time for a pint. 10 minutes, this is no problem. <laughs> Deep down in my soul, she knew. We, we didn't have time. We didn't have time for a pint. Good Canadians. Two uncomfortably speedy pints later, we rush back down the road for dinner at the Churchill Arms. Now we must run to dinner. No, no. <laughs> really didn't think she'd take me seriously there. Oh my God. Excuse me. We, we are ridiculous. The Churchill Arms was built in the 1750s, making it one of London's oldest pubs. I was pretty excited to be able to now say, like I've been in one of London's oldest pubs, like on purpose. It is a very popular spot for both locals and tourists. It is known as London's most Christmassy pub. It has an eclectic interior, which Nicole accurately described as sensory overload. Oh, and it serves Thai food. There's a cute little restaurant in the back. That's where we ended our Notting Hill trip. That one was obviously mine. Probably could have shared a plate between the two of us. Once you start walking around and visiting local establishments, you start to notice nods to the rich history that surrounds and created this part of London. Two things though, we didn't get to experience this time around and might require a second visit. Carnival, which takes place during the last week of August, and the Portobello Road Market on a sunny day. Like, we need a redo. If you are familiar with the area and you know of any shops or events that are worth a visit, please feel free to share with the rest of the abroad community in the comments. You guys always have the best suggestions. Thank you for joining me for another episode. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.